Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ. And two more games left in this schedule. This year, our first year in a conference. But look at this. We got BYU and Navy coming up. And look, we are ranked number 24 in the nation. This is a big feat, especially since... We didn't expect to be here. I mean, look at our overall. We are 61 overall, 63 offensive defense. And we are doing pretty damn good in conference play. We own the tiebreaker over Houston. So there's four and two. It looks like they righted the ship. Looks like after their loss to us, they beat SMU 43-42. Wow, that must have been a great shootout. And then beat Cincinnati as well. We do play Navy coming up. So that is going to be a must-win game because think about it. If, if Navy wins out, if they beat Army this week and beat us, then they jump us for the national for the conference championship. So really that Navy game is a big one. BYU, of course, is this week. But let's just look at where we're projected to look like come bowl season because this is going to be pretty good. We're ranked. So it looks like we're in the Little Caesars Bowl. Marquette versus Ohio. I mean, a 5-5 five and five team, I don't feel so good about doing that. But look at us. We got the number one ranked offense in the nation. Number one, actually in points per game, we number eight offense. But look at our defense. Our defense is not bad. Remember, we are negative nine turnover differential. Now we're down, down to negative uh, three. So if you look at the national championship, Washington and Alabama are still there. Cotton Bowl, Georgia and Kansas State, Orange Bowl, Florida State, I mean, I think those are the only two undefeated teams. But look at Western Kentucky. They are still undefeated. They are having a hell of a season. They got Appalachian State coming up and then uh, New Mexico State. So they, are, they might be undefeated as well. But other than that, there's not too many um, undefeated teams. I think it's just those three. So if we look at our matchup going up against BYU, they do have a good offense and defense. We have to watch out. They are 102 ranked versus the pass defense, but their rush defense, look at that, they're 25. Their offense is top at least 40, which is pretty good. So we're going to have our work cut out for us. Let's just look at uh, their schedule because let's see the games that they lost. So they lost by one point to Houston. They lost by two scores to Boise, two scores to UCF, and two scores to, or one score to Nevada, and then a few scores to SMU. So they're not losing by that big a margin. They're actually doing pretty good, especially with this loss for Houston and loss versus Boise. Um, if we look at their team leaders, let's just look at their team leaders. So it looks like not really impressive numbers. Looks like they can run the ball a little bit. Uh, 981 yards for their running back. But we this is an important game. We have some visitors coming in, especially our top prospect, John Waters. We really want, we want him. Uh, let's just look at our recruiting board really quick. We're just going to skim through it really quick. I just want to show you guys the visits that we have coming this week. Look at all these visits. Willie Payne, Hunter Greggs, Albert Vick, John Waters, Dylan Mack, Ron Sands, Todd Williams, Paul Miller. All these guys are coming this week. So here's Jamel Cooley. This is the Juco athlete. We'll just go down, down the line really quick just so you can look at the range. You can pause if you do want to see uh, what their ratings are like. All these guys are pretty much we're in first for all these guys except Hunter Greggs, but we do have the visit this week, so hopefully we jump. Uh, Willie Ron Sands is another middle linebacker that I like pretty. I, I like him. I mean, he's 92 acceleration, but going down the line here, all these guys are pretty much we're in first place for all these guys. Uh, there's a couple guys that I just added to the board, uh, including Jimmy Ward, an athlete, 78 overall that I added. He's pretty decent. But let's just hop into this game, man. Going up against BYU. This is supposed to be our protected rival, but we're going to change around the conference come next year because the locations are off. East and West teams aren't really synced. So next, next year, we'll probably get that synced up. So let's hop into it. Let's go. So some of the tasks you can see, we need to get three sacks with the D-line or linebackers in order to make way for Hunter Greggs to come. So we're definitely looking to get those points. But early on in this game, Hodge is getting loose. Nice 17-yard run here on this Marquette defense. And remember, man, we do sometimes have that spy out, but a lot of times it doesn't work that. out. But look at Lewis Parker coming up with the strip on that one that's a peanut tillman punch coming from behind look at that goes right for the ball that is perfect tackling that time by lewis parker making the quarterback fumble on that one so 
Man, Donnie Wolf is actually getting the start in this game because Ashton Cohen isn't fully healthy, so he gets the start. So here we go. He starts his first drive out past the 50, finding Ben Miller here for the first down up to the 20-yard line. So facing a third and 12, almost at the 20, finding Eddie McCray on the outside there. Nice catch and adjustment by Eddie Cray on, on that one. But on a second and goal, Halfback counter to the outside. Alex Brown is going to run into the end zone. Nobody's going to catch him on the outside that time. That's a nice 10-yard run. And Marquette takes over with that lead, that 7-0 lead after the turnover. But look at this studio update. Navy, they take down Army, who's on the other side of the division. So if we win this game, we definitely have a tough matchup going up against Navy next week. And that's going to be a huge matchup for the conference as a whole. But BYU takes back over, but they cannot get the first down, so they do have to punt it away. So through our first couple possessions, we get the ball back right away. And two minutes left in this first quarter, giving the ball to Alex Brown for the nice carry there. But on a third and 12, a 10-minute throw across the middle, and Donnie Wolf. I just forget he doesn't have that arm strength, so I can't wait as long as I do to throw the ball with Ashton Cohen with Donnie Wolf because it's a big adjustment. It, it, it's very small, it looks like, but just the differences between the two, I mean, it's it's obvious because I can't make the same throws I can make uh, with Ashton Cohen, so definitely on that one, I underestimated how hard his, how strong he is with his arm and Definitely under through that one. So here we are. We get them to stop, get stopped on a second down there, but on a third and goal, attempted on the screen play. Hodge throws to a running back, but cannot get to the first down marker, get into the end zone. So they do settle for the field goal here, and it's a seven to three game early on, and we get the ball back. We need to just give Alex Brown the ball because he's been our bread and butter. And as you can see, getting a nice screen play, but that's only for five yards. So facing a third and two, another counter play to the outside. Alex Brown's going to fight for the yarders, get his nice six-yard run on that one. So five and, a, five and a half minutes left in this second quarter. I'm going to see an open man across the middle, but the linebacker makes a good play on that one. That might be the safety on that one. He makes an adjustment, and like I said, it's kind of an adjustment getting used to Donnie Wolf's arm because if that was Cohen, that was completed all the way. So two costly mistakes early on in this game, but luckily our defense is playing pretty good, but we gave him some good field position. But here they are, Hodges handing it off to the running back here for the nice uh, carry there. So after a holding call, third and nine, Hodges going to drop back to pass. Nice pass that time to Bo Tanner over the middle for the 28-yard touchdown reception. And BYU goes up by three. So now we get the ball back two and a half minutes left in this half. Getting the ball to Eddie McCray on the outside. Remember, they have that chemistry, Donnie Wolf and Eddie McCray. They had that connection last year, so it makes it easier this year. But here they're sending a blitz, sending the safety on a blitz, Austin Lee gets to Donnie Wolf. So now facing a third and 26. And we're just going to throw it deep this time to the receiver. But that one's going to be tipped. Trying to get the ball to Kevin Oliver on that one. So BYU takes over a minute and a half left in the half. And here is... I mean, they're they're not doing too bad. I mean, they're playing some pretty good defense. Their offense isn't great right now, but they're doing just enough. But on a third and down, running it with Hodge. But Ramsour gets there to stop him on a third down. So we do force the punt. And a minute a minute left in this half now. Donnie Wolf's going to find Eddie McCray, who tiptoes along the sideline. He probably could have ran up field on that one. But instead, he makes the catch. I'd rather have him make the catch than drop it. So here we are, second and nine, getting across the 50-yard line, close to the 27. And Donnie Wolf using his legs. That's something that he does a little bit better than Cohen. But on a third and six, attempting to throw to Alex Brown on the outside, but we don't get the first down. But you know me, it's fourth and one, 16 seconds left, no timeouts. But remember, we get the first and it stops the clock. So now we hurry up to the line. So 13 seconds left on a first and 10, trying to throw to the outside. But Alex Brown, he almost has a running lane to get into the end zone, but he runs out of bounds to stop the clock. So six seconds left now, and Donnie Wolf. Finds Chad Ball on the slant route. He gets open for the touchdown, and Chad Ball has been coming 
around late in the season. Remember, he was just a special teams ace early. But look at the move Alex Brown puts on the defender. And he makes three men miss to start the second half. Alex Brown, I mean... I cannot say enough about this guy. I mean, you guys see it week to week. Alex Brown is just running away with these national awards, and he just doesn't disappoint. But coming back out on oh, defense, Bushman, Matt Bushman, the tight end, look at how close Bruh. this is to being intercepted by Anthony Jetter. Look at that. Bruh. They pretty much both had possession on that one, but what a nice play by Bushman there. So, Haj. Down by 11, sending a blitz this time, Adam. And he finds his receiver, Hefo, but he can't get the first down. So they do try to kick the long field goal, but that one's going to be wide to the right. So Marquette takes over on offense, and Donnie Wolf's just looking to have a clean second half. Remember, he had two interceptions in that first half. Second half, he's going to try to be more precise with the ball, be on time instead of these late throws because... He knows he can't make these throws that Ashton Cohen can't make. But here on a third down, dropping back a little bit too far. I'm so used to our our offensive line letting pass rushers in right away. Gotcha, but bitch. here is Hodge getting swallowed up this time. And that's going to be a sack we need for. Uh, remember, we have Hunter, Hunter uh, coming in as a recruit. And we just need to make sure that we get these sacks. So we're sending pressure at this point in the game. I'm just trying to send some pressure, get some sacks, but we do stop Hodge from getting the first down on that scramble. So now we take back over on offense. Alex Brown with a nice 30-yard rush getting past the 50-yard line. So on a first and 10 play action, Ben Miller gets open across the middle, but the cornerback is going to run him down. He's going to be tackled at about the one-yard line, and you know what time it is. Alex Brown on a first and goal. No, it's not going to be ran this time. It's going to be a swing pass out to him. He makes a move on the safety that time, and Alex Brown gets into the end zone while taking a hit that time, but he gets on the board, so it is 28-10 here on our home turf, and Marquette on defense, we just need to get these sacks, man. I'm worried about these sacks, so I'm setting put pressure. See here, I'm playing a zero, cover zero, and we almost get in for the sack, but he finds Hodge, finds his receiver on the outside. Josh Dunbar gets beat, but that's a rare deep pass given up by Josh Dunbar. Remember, last gotcha, season we had a ton of those where the left side of the field was just exposed, but Josh Dunbar is doing Bruh. a hell of a job this year. So on a third and goal, I mean, Hodge gets straight spooked, just throws the ball away right away. So now they're facing a fourth and goal. They have to go for it. They throw it across the middle to Hilo, but he cannot. Hefo actually cannot get into the end zone, and we stop him on the two-yard line. So it is six minutes left, and we're up by 18. We just need to milk the clock, make sure we can get out of this dangerous territory. And Alex Brown gets a few yards, but on a second and five, Eddie McCray getting close to the 20 yard line so now we're out of danger of getting a safety but on a first and 10 Donnie Will's gonna roll out right pick up the first down put a move on the defender that time and he's gonna get to about the 35 yard line so now about four minutes left in this game Donnie Wolf on a play action is gonna roll out right this time he's gonna find Herman Rogers who's gonna be open on the out route nice route that time creating some good separation between him and the slot corner. So on a second and 10, past the 40-yard line, Alex Brown's going to break to the outside, almost break free on that one, making a cut in. And he has 150 yards on 18 carries up to this point. And on a couple plays later, Alex Brown takes a huge hit. So with that being said, I take him immediately out of the game. I'm not trying to expose him to getting hurt at all. So Glenn Hall comes in along with the second team offense. And Glenn Hall takes a carry to the outside, makes a couple of men miss, and gets inside the five-yard line just about. And on a first and goal, Glenn Hall gets in, and that finishes it off. We take care of business at home versus our protected rival in the division. And Donnie Wolf does a pretty good job of 
basically coming back from kind of a porous first half he threw two interceptions and it may have been my fault I'm not used to that difference in arm strength but Donnie Wolf definitely had a good second half Alex Brown has the beastie game he always has and look at this we get the three sacks we needed it didn't just have to be from D lineman it could have been from linebackers as well so we get that those extra recruiting points coming for Hunter Greggs and it's gonna be pretty nice to see the bonuses that we get for all of our recruits because we had a ton of them this week so hit subscribe hit that like button next week is a huge game going up against navy and this is for the division conference championship on the line so let's get it let's go